Hello YouTube, so this video will be documenting the rebuild of my first kit build. So this is now SBH1 Mark II. If you watch my original video for this guitar, you'll know everything that I did wrong and why I eventually took it apart. But I decided to take inspiration from my Blood Splatter Randy Rhodes build. But I truly went all in on it this time. Uh, I also use this build to practice using new tools uh, to make the pick guard, which has helped me towards doing my GGBO build. So the stuff that I'm doing in that, I learned from doing these. Uh, so I'm gonna switch over to the slideshow and voiceover mode now, starting with the refinishing of the guitar. So took the guitar back down to bare wood and then added even coats of a white primer. This made it a lot easier to see any areas that needed any extra black adding to them. Went with a matte black rattle can finish this time. So I applied even coats across the entire guitar, as you can see here. Now, this was in the early days of my shed, so it explains why it's a bit of a mess in there. I brought the guitar into my guitar room to cure, because at this point the shed wasn't watertight. There was one area where... I noticed it ran when I brought it inside, which is on the headstock here. In all honesty though, it ties in with the theme, so I decided to leave it be. There was always one thing that was a little bit off on this guitar, and that was the binding. Now, it was really well done. Uh, that well done, in fact, that when I took the original nut off, as I knocked it off, the some of the binding actually came away. This is something that I didn't really document the process of. But as I knocked that off, some of the binding came off and I had to super glue it back in. But even with a white guitar, it didn't really look right. Like if I was just doing it like a true, sort of more classic style, it'd be fine. If I did it just the black, it'd be okay. But I was going with the whole blood splatter effect. So to tie into it better, I decided to change the actual binding by using a mixture of three different acrylic, uh, acrylic paints, uh, which is actually what I used on the rest of the guitar as well, which you will see shortly. As I was changing the binding on the neck, I added a faux binding to the body, and I also painted the fret markers too. Use the same three acrylic paints that I did on the Rhodes build, but it looks so much better over a black paint. And the faux binding was done by putting masking tape either side of where I wanted the red, and I used a paintbrush to fill it all in. This gave me the freedom to mess up. May not be perfect as you can see on the curved areas in the middle and the bottom of the horns, but it still worked well and I was happy with how things came out. Now the fret markers, they were originally white on the Mark I version, and adding the red was so easy. I didn't mask the fretboard off as it being a mess added to the theme. The binding on the neck was done by masking off the back of the neck and using the paintbrush to add it. Some of it did go on the fret ends, but again, it ties in with the theme really well. And then lastly, I added the SPH 1 to the headstock, again using a paintbrush, which worked really well. As you'll have seen in those slides, I added the red paint to not only the binding but I also added it to the fret markers as well and I was really happy with how things turned out. Uh, next I moved on to adding the blood splatter effect to the body, the neck and the headstock. So I did the exact same uh, process as I did with the road build and I used the same mixture of acrylic paints that I'd use on the fret markers and the binding and I used a combination of using the toothbrush so first I was like flicking it like this didn't really work so I eventually just kind of threw it out of the guitar uh, and then eventually I did the exact same as I did on the roads I covered my hand in red paint grabbed the back of the headstock and dragged it down the back of the neck which gave it a really cool effect and even though it's acrylic paint and it does obviously stick out a lot more it doesn't affect the playability uh, Thankfully, I realised that when I did it on the Rhodes build, so I was quite happy with how this one turned out. 
Once the acrylic paint had dried, I mass off the fretboard again and start adding the blood splatter effect to the whole guitar. The lighting isn't the greatest in these slides as these were taken before I got the LED light that I have now. But I did do the same process as before, so mix the acrylic paints, use a toothbrush to flick and throw the paint at the guitar. As the front of the guitar is what you see the most, this is where a majority of the effect was added, as you'll see in these slides. And it was a lot of fun to do. I also added more of the effect on the inside of the horns, as this is something that I missed on the rose build. And it actually blends in really well with the binding. So I was quite happy with how this one turned out. Now, we get to my favourite parts. The headstock and the back of the neck. So the headstock obviously got the blood splatter effect there. And then I did the same as I did on the rose build. I covered my hand in red paint, gripped the back of the head and dragged it down the neck. You can really see like my handprint at the top of the headstock where I gripped it before dragging it down. It looks awesome. So an issue that I didn't actually mention on the Mark 1 version of this build is what happened to the clear coat. So around, I mean, you've seen my wall hangers. So the one with the Explorer and the one with the Angel of Death. They're Hercules uh, wall hangers, so, you know, they pull down. And I also have a Hercules stand that is just to the uh, left of me here. And that's the exact same thing. It has, it's not really rubber, but it, it has some protective coating on it, like, you know, protective material, sorry. Well, I started to notice that around the areas of the headstock where the Hercules hanger and stand held them in, it started to burn through. And same thing on the back of the stand as well. So the back of the stand has a latch on it that basically keeps the guitar in place. Well, in the area of the back of the body, I could see a mark from that as well. And I was very confused by it. So I started researching it online and I think I know what the issue is, but there's a lot of different opinions as to why this happens. Quite possibly, it may very well have been nitrocellulose based lacquer, but I can't be certain. I mean, it was a cheap, Wilco's rattle can finish. I wasn't expecting it to be perfect. Um, I started searching on Amazon for uh, different uh, lacquer, and I stumbled across the Rust-Oleum matte clear coat. Didn't stay whether it was polyurethane or natural cellulose, but I decided to give it a try. And actually, with it being a matte finish. It actually ties in really well, and thus far, yeah, touch wood, it hasn't actually burnt through. So I'm really glad that that hasn't happened. I mean, to be fair, it's black, so I probably wouldn't notice it anyway. <laughs> Once I did everything had cured, though, I moved on to installing the hardware and the pickups as well. Lines actually look a lot better in these photos. I think I had a decent weather day for a change. You can just about see though that the entire guitar has been sealed with a matte clear coat. Once it had cured, I moved on to installing the hardware and pickups, which you'll see. I actually added the effect to the hardware this time. This is again something I thought about after doing my rose build. You can see there that the machine has the front and back have both been painted with the blood splatter effect. Then I painted and installed the strap locks and the neck screw tops. This also shows the effect that I added to the back of this guitar as I couldn't get a good photo previously. Now, here's the back of the neck. It's better lighting, but my days in my desk are an absolute mess. Then I installed the bridge and tailpiece that the screws have been painted red. The pickups and the blood splatter surrounds are installed. As you'll see from this overview photo, it looks amazing, apart from my messy desk. After I did all this work to this guitar, it sat for, it must have been about six months waiting for a pick guard. At the time, I had done some work for a friend where I had to make completely custom uh, pick guards. Sorry, pick guard and control and switch covers. Because it gave me a guitar that had literally nothing. 
And I did them all by hand, which I mentioned previously about my jeweler saw. I used that and it worked, but they weren't perfect. I tried to make uh, a pit guard for this. I did it by hand, same process, but using white pit guard material that I had spare. And I really wasn't happy with it at all. So I knew that to get the best results, I needed to use a router with a template. Biggest problem, I didn't have a router or a template, nor had I ever used one. Uh, <laughs> also at the time I finished all the upgrades to my workshop, but at the time I hadn't started on my workbenches. So I had it planned uh, to get the work done, but it was obviously six months down the line because the shed needed fixing first to turn it into a usable workshop. And then I eventually got the work benches done. And if you've followed my socials for a while, you know for a fact why I can't really get away with it in this room. But for those who don't, I created an almighty mess and I did not fancy cleaning it up in this room. It would not have been fun. It wasn't fun cleaning it up in the shed, to be brutally honest. But yeah, I definitely, definitely glad I waited until I had my work benches done. Here's the black pit guard that was made from a template that I did myself. Then I have the blood splatter effect to it, which looks amazing. And here's the amount of mess in my workshop from doing one pit guard. As you'll have seen, I managed to get the pit guard made. So I started with a, it was, it was just a drawing of the pit guard because the original one wasn't really straight. So I had to redraw it all and then I created the template for it. And that went really well. Some of you may freak out about the, how I had it all set up because I put my router in my vise and had the cutter face up. Essentially, it's the exact same as a router table, but I don't have a router table. So it was the easiest option for me. And it worked, I, I tested it out. I wouldn't have gone through with it if I didn't know it was safe. Like that router bit didn't move at all. So I was really happy with how everything came out. And I have the blood splatter effect to it and everything else. And after that, I uh, moved on to the wiring. Now, at first, I did mess up. Now, let's be fair. It had been over six months, probably close to seven or eight, since I'd actually looked at the wiring for the Gary Holt uh, EMG set. Turns out I got one wire wrong. It was really funny because I had like a sudden eureka moment when I actually realised that everything was working. And my wife made a joke at me and uh, to the mic a little bit, but I was really happy with how everything turned out. And I hope you agree with me as well. So here's some glamour shots of the finished build. I was over the moon with how this turned out. I mean, the effect looks really cool. The Gary Holt EMGs look amazing, even though the contrast slightly with the blood spire it works so well here's how the neck looks all strung up and definitely my favorite part is the front of the headstock i mean it just looks amazing all right so here we have it here is sbh1 mark ii in all its blood splatter glory thanks to the different angle on this as well you could really see the, the effect on it thanks to the better lighting so I absolutely love how this finish came out. I love the uh, the faux binding. Um, main reason I did that is because stripping the original finish off, you may see it in the close-up photos, but I kind of wrecked it a little bit. Like, it looked a bit horrible, so I was like... So luckily doing this, like, tied into the whole theme thing, so I got away with it. I absolutely love this headstock. It just looks really cool, and... Trying to do the same as I did on my angel and not knock anything. And I just love the back of the uh, back of the neck as well. And I added not as much, but I still added some of the detail into the back. One thing I didn't um, talk about in the Mark One version was how I did 
decided to sort the alpha jack problem. So, on the Mark 1 version, I had to have it so that the switch was down here in this cavity because the wires weren't long enough. And I had my output on this bottom one, I think. Yeah, because I originally put it in the switch bit up here and you know, mess about with it. So the easiest alternative was to pop it in this inside of one of the uh, V. Now, it may look a little bit awkward, but it made me start to stand up to play this guitar, which, you know, with these, you, you kind of have to, because I mean, you're sitting down at, you know, you sit at an angle like this, but you're hunched over. So, well, I don't know how bad I'd of doing that. But yeah, it may look awkward, but it's actually really useful. And the cool thing is as well, so you could just about see it there. I've actually managed to wrap myself a battery box. You will notice a little bit of a chip away there. Book a rash. Gotta love it. So what I've actually done is, so this was the switch cover for... I said switch cover, I mean battery cover. Was it for that one? No. Sorry, I thought it was the switch cover for another one, but I think I routed a uh, completely new one. Again, I said switch cover, not battery cover. Anyway. It's alright, that's spur of the moment thinking. So basically the battery wire goes from here into the control cavity and then from the control cavity to the output wire. Right? So it has you know multiple wires that it needs to get to. So that was the most logical place. Also, I don't have to remove the entire pit guard to take the battery out. Now it's probably gonna trigger some people seeing this open, but I kind of find that funny. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The only reason why this is open is I may very well end up turning it back to original, but also routing a circle or cutting a circle seems to be the most difficult and annoying thing. Uh, so I'm waiting until I get a template that may be closer to this so that I can create a cover for it. So probably going to cover it up because if I ever decide to put it back to the original, you know, it's easy as anything to plug that hole up rather than having to route a new section away. Anywho, that's enough talking, uh, but one thing you will notice, once I let go of this, it has got a severe amount of neck dive, but it does, obviously, it goes to level, it doesn't drop any further, sort of. That's just because of where my strap is. Uh, again, I'm on the main annoying creaky floorboards, but not much I can do at the minute. I'm gonna be doing the same as I did in my Angel of Death video. So I'm going to play you. Oh, did I not turn that back up? Well, that's annoying. You know what? I'm keeping this in. This is funny. So I spent that much time getting this thing put back together. And I forgot about it. There we go. That's better. So I just looked at the background and I'm like, why is it so dark? I never turned it back on. Anyway. <coughs> so in that one, I played... Part of the intro for Tears Don't Fall, because obviously it gives you a lot of the acoustic and clean tones, and you can get the distorted tones as well. So I'm going to do that again, so I originally had this in drop, no, I had this in standard tuning. Um, I said that I did a few sound demos, I did like all three of these guitars, the last three updates, but I wasn't happy with them. However, now watching my footage back and watching my full videos, I'm a lot happier with how things are, so yeah, what I've decided to do is I've decided to do that. What I'm thinking of doing is, I'm going to do it on the A9R in full humbuck mode. Then I will pull this up, which activates the third pickup within this, pick, uh, this set. So there's another pickup underneath it, as I showed earlier on through the video. Realise I didn't do that, so that's why I added that photo in there. And then I will do it again, switching to the bridge pickup, which is the 81 in a really cool red finish. But thinking about the full cover video, cover video. So obviously I'm going to do the same as Mahana Arbor series, A Mains or Death. I'm waiting until I get a way to be able to properly produce it. But I mean, looking at this guitar, and the style, and everything else. I'm feeling Power Wolf. Yeah, I think Power Wolf would be a good song to uh, cover on this. I haven't really thought about that, but I thought I was toying with someone else. Uh, but I'm thinking either Demons Are a Girl's Best Friend 
or Sanctify with Dynamite, because I like both those songs. <laughs> uh, if there is a different, if you, you know, agree that Powerful would be a good song to play on this, let me know in the comments below. However, if there is a different song that you think might fit this a bit better, again, let me know in the comments. I'll uh, take your, uh, use, you know, take everyone's opinion and figure out where I'm going to go from there. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. So I am again on my Line 6 Spider 4 on my Bullet from the Valentine settings. So this is the acoustic one with the little bit of a delay in it. So I'm going to stop talking and do some of the tears out for. <laughs> So, I'm going to switch back over to the acoustic setting, and here comes that riff again. Hopefully that was messed up. <laughs> and this time I am on the 89R extra pickup. <laughs> sustain on these. Anywho, so this time I've now switched to the A1 in the bridge position. So in comparison, before I carry on, in comparison to my original sound de demos that I did for these, just then I really could hear, I could hear it anyway because obviously I was stood right next to my amp and the biggest problem was watching my footage back and I couldn't hear it in the recording. I know for a fact, now if I can hear it right in front of me, you guys are going to be able to definitely hear the difference between the 89R in full humbucker and the extra pickup of the 89R. Anyway, that's enough talking about that. Third time now, I'm going to do this again. So, back on Makers of Channel, I'm on the 81 on the bridge. <laughs> Well. 
All right, so you will have noticed for definite, I was playing that very differently to how I was playing it in my Angel of Death video. Now, there's a reason for that, and I'm not going to go into it now. I'm going to talk about it in the next stage of this video. So, I'll talk to you soon. Well, there you have it. That is the full rebuild of SBH1, now known as SBH1 Mark II. You may have caught a glimpse of this every so often in my videos, like in this bottom corner, like right about here. In reality, this has been on this wall the entire time. And also, <laughs> the photos of these guitars, sorry, let me just get that back, there we go. These four guitars on my wall are literally my profile picture and my cover photo on my Facebook page, and then my profile picture on Instagram and the Great Guitar Build-Off uh, site for my profile. So I'm like, I don't know why I was so determined to hide it, but I didn't go into as much detail as I have now. So, and also I didn't get to do a sound demo. But also in my great, one of my great guitar build-off videos, I was in, in this room talking to my camera and obviously moving around and you probably caught a glimpse of it. But yeah, it's, it's been here this entire time. And I'm really happy with how things are. I don't think I mentioned this in the Mark 1 version. Sorry, it's really hot today. I, I'm actually having to re-record this section because there's a few things that I forgot about. Uh, yeah, in the Mark I version, that guitar was heavily inspired by another guitar, which I now own, thanks to my family friend Phil. As I said in the Honda Arbor Series video, he gave me two guitars, but this guitar was now the, yeah, the, the inspiration for it, so I was like, I've already got one, so I don't need two, so let's, you know, let, let's go crazy with it. And I'm really happy with how things came out. You may notice that, may have noticed, sorry, get my words right, that I played Tears Don't Fall in a, a very different way to how I did on my Angel of Death. It was still the same key, but just obviously a different position. The reason for that is I did a few test records and I was originally going to use the footage, but I really watched it back. Not only because of the sound levels, but I couldn't use it. I spent probably 130, 130 to £150 on this guitar kit. So it was cheap, so I wasn't it. never expecting the best thing ever. And I was just getting into all things kit build and luthery. So when I was looking at the net break angle, uh, well, sorry, when I got the neck in the pocket, I was looking at it and I'm like, it's weird. One of the frets looked like it had been, so it wasn't even, it was fine. And then it got, looked like it had been truly hammered down and like crushed. I remembered about this when I was getting it all set up for this video. So I went through with a fret rocker and every single fret is uneven. Now, I know for a fact that the neck itself is dead straight because I tried to use my notch straight edge on it. Now, I will show you those at some point. They are they are cheap and nasty, like it's not the greatest. I took advice from Guns and Guitars and made my own. Uh, because I had multiple guitars that did have different scale length and different amount of uh, guitar uh, frets. So I was like, all right. And it should be 24 and three quarters. Yeah, it should be 24 and three quarters. So that's the exact same as my Explorer. But the notch straight edge I made doesn't fit on that one. So I can't, can't be certain with a notch straight edge if it's perfectly straight. But I checked the neck relief by using a capo and, you know, the, the other way that I've checked the neck relief before. And it there is, like, no relief whatsoever. So I definitely need to alter the truss rod. But also, I need to fix the neck break angle because, obviously, in the Mark 1 version, I went out there with a chisel and wrecked that thing. So my action is ridiculously high. But as I mentioned in my Honor video, uh, my Honor Arbor series video, 
I managed to get the French shiny on that one, but I don't actually have any experience in regards to Fret level and crown. Well, my actual plan is to do the Crimson two day maintenance course. Now, because of the amount of issues I've noticed on this, it's more than likely going to probably need a refret. So, part of that two day maintenance course is doing uh, refretting. So, I figured, you know, might as well. And I'm hoping maybe in the new year that I'll be able to do that. Finish that, I'm just reading, reading my script. I do have the, I have three more guitars that are, you know, slideshow type uploads. I just need to buy pickups machine heads for two of them and pickups for another one. Obviously I can't buy them all at the same time because I ain't made of money. <laughs> but these ones, um, they will be different because they aren't actually finished. Like the guitars are still in progress. So you'll have the whole slideshow thing, and then I'll have more of a setup, like my GTBO build, so I'll be able to show you me physically doing the work, which is a lot more fun for me. Um, I enjoy doing these videos, but obviously there's a lot of times where I'm just sat talking to a camera or talking to my mic when I'm doing my voiceovers. So I, I want to be able to do all the work and everything. But yeah. Until I get all these issues fixed, my idea of doing Powell for my cover will take a long time. So that that's kind of on the back burner, but that's definitely the band I want to cover. For now, though, all my videos should be GGBO related. Now, touch wood. As of re-recording this little section here and doing all my editing and everything, a lot of the parts are on their way to me. So I'm hoping when this video goes live, the parts should be with me. So keep your eyes peeled for my unboxing video. If you enjoyed this video though, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Love not being able to talk. If you also enjoyed it, please share it with your friends because any growth on this channel is greatly appreciated. As always, my social links are down in the description below. So I've got my Facebook and Instagram on there. Feel free to like and follow my pages. That's all from me in this one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next.